two, one. Beautiful. Beautiful. And you are all beautiful when I say beautiful. Hi. It's Tom. Beautiful Tom. And I'm here back with a slightly different video today because I'm here with um, my pedal board, which I've been gigging with, which currently is set up like this. It only changes a few times a month. So right now um, it is decked out with, uh, well, of course, the Sugar Bridges crossover blend pedal, which I make, the single cross crossover pedal, which I also make, and a solo pedal, which I definitely don't make, the MXR Custom Badass Modified Overdrive, which I don't make, an EBS Multicomp, which I don't make, <laughs> and finishing off the list of things I don't make, the Sonic Research ST300 Tuner, which I don't make but wholeheartedly endorse and think is the best thing I've ever owned. Um, wait, let me think about this. Mm, it's in the top three anyway. I mean, this thing is, uh, it just, it tracks so amazingly fast. It's really easy to read. I, I wholeheartedly endorse it. And, uh, that's that buy one. Um, they're great for bass. They're great for detuned, drop tuned, five string bass. They're just great. I love this thing so much. I want to buy them for all my friends for Christmas. Hey, I'm going to buy them for all my friends for Christmas. Anyway, and as you probably saw, I'm in tune. You know, one, two, three, four, five. These a little flat. That's why I love it. Um, in fact, it's so fast, it may not even have registered on the video. So let me tell you what how this thing's set up, because you're probably bored with listening to me talk already. I know I am. Okay, so of course I start with the tuner. It's got a little hard bypass thing in it I think I think it's got a little um, a relay but uh, and that's going into the crossover and with this setup the crossover I have the highs going to the multi comp and then the modified OD the lows go straight to this box and this is a passive blend which I did make but uh, yeah I could make one for you if you want uh, it is literally two resistors in a box I mean, the jacks, I think, are the most expensive part of it. It's uh, two 20K resistors, um, and that works great. The only problem is if you're ever driving a high capacitance load, like, say, for example, if you come out of a passive blend into a long cable run, uh, you will start to lose high frequencies, which, surprisingly, isn't actually a huge issue for bass anyway. But it is an issue because this comes out into the sugar britches, which then goes out. And the sugar britches has the solo in the loop. And it has a hard bypass. Just It's a physical switch with a hard bypass. So this is actually driving my cable run. Um, in practice, it doesn't really matter. Uh, I haven't had any problems with it anyway. Okay, that needs to be louder in my headphones. Let's see, and uh, today I still have the Serene 5-string PJ with Delano pickups, and it is passive right now because I'm uh, um, getting some hum out of the preamp. Well, yeah, it's not. It doesn't sound any different anyway. Um, so let's start out with what's, uh, what's going on here. Um, normally I use the solo for, uh, when I want more drive, this is always on, hence the, uh, no need for a switching setup. And so my first experiment with, um, with, uh, a non-switched pedal board. One of the, uh, things I've been playing with is, uh, from an earlier video, I was experimenting with just compressing the mids and highs, and I like that a lot for not overdriven <laughs> sounds. So like for country gigs where I'm using FLEDs. And 
And I actually do play those gigs where you just, and you're really just playing two notes, but you really want it to kind of be awesome. Um, <laughs> um, and the first thing I've decided about this is that the uh, compressed mids and highs works better if you have uh, chromes or TI flats or one of the deader flats, or if you just palm mute, um, because uh, you actually don't need more sustain from... Like, this bass has um, the Ernie Ball, what used to call the Cobalt flats, the Slinky flats, which have a lot of... A, a lot of, uh, what are they, called? density in the, in the mids and highs already because they have nice sustain. So, I don't really need the compression with the... Uh, uh, the Ernie Ball flats. Um, but sometimes that is useful with really dead strings, or if you want a little bit of drive. Yes, I, I mean, I'm uh, actually using the custom Badass to give it a little bit of uh, actual grit. Yeah, I have the crossover, now this is upside down, but the crossover frequency is about less than halfway up, so... I don't have the slightest idea what frequency that is. That's just about where I... That, that leaves you a bit of a... Uh, if I unplug the uh, highs, I think that's the highs. It puts a little bit of the mids in. So, um... So, the overdrive is giving a little bit of distortion to the mid-range. Which is mostly not audible. <laughs> and I'm all about the not audible distortion because that's the kind of thickness that, that fills up a mix. Because when you're on stage with a drummer or, and a couple of guitars, you don't really hear any of the treble. What you're mostly hearing is uh, the treble just comes out as definition. And the... And this also works with the blues band pretty well. Um, what I'll find, my, what I find, I'll uh, I'm end up doing when I want more definition is just killing the compression and and just using a little bit of overdrive to to grid it up. And I leave that on, and I'm just done with setup. And then uh, then the solos over here. In the, difference and then the compression doesn't seem it doesn't really make that much difference it kind of takes a little of the of the, the attack out but doesn't really do that much. And then when I have the, the, the overdrive after it, just that little bit of extra sustain in the treble makes um, the solo drive sing. subtle but it really does make a difference now there's some other other uh uh some other details in the rig here that uh are significant but not in the same way um uh first of all if we look at the solo drive pedal and any of the licks from the blues band, but uh, 
we do these rock blues things and, and I really do like I, I like the way this sounds in the mix with like basically like this um, on the melt setting so like the medium pre-emphasis and not very hard pushed I mean because you know what the solo these things will go just absolutely 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 insane amounts of drive and sustain and compression and everything um, but uh, other things to think about if you're looking at this going what's that well these you know the clicks you can't hear it because it's probably noise gated but <laughs> these are all lock knobs on the sugar britches and I'm thinking about putting them on everything um, this is the new ones after Waves bought them, and I really like the little ones because they have the, uh, uh <clears throat> come on, come on, you can do it, oh, Velcro, you, it has the, uh, the screw-on base, so it stays in place really well, and they're just a little shorter than the old ones, so they're not as ridiculous, uh, in height as the original prototype lock knobs, um, I should probably put a link somewhere for that because the I, I again speaking of unpaid endorsements, lock knobs are great. Uh, I also have a lock knob on the single cross, which cross, which is great because it's really easy to bump this. The problem is, it's got a little um, the Velcro. <laughs> the base, and I don't I don't even know if this is going to be visible because it's all brown and brown and brown. The base for the this big knob, oh, oh that's loud, is. Whoa, stop that. Um, the base for this knob is, is is glued on, and the little glue strip thing is kind of like jelly. I, I, it's dangerous, and I don't like it, and I wouldn't trust it. So I, I want to sell these guys with the lock knobs pre-installed because I think that they are an essential feature. Um, but I'm reluctant to buy the big ones because I don't like the way the base sits. So may, maybe Waves will come out with the old screw-on bases like they used to have. Um, other things to talk about. No, that needs drive. There we go. There we go. bit of my hit song. Uh, the other thing to talk about here is that the multi-comp is not in multi-comp mode. It's in tube sim mode, which uh, gives it a little bit of a tube flavor before all the drives. And I do like that. Um, I'm not always happy. I thought for a second that maybe the multi-comp was an inverting pedal and I missed something, but it is not. So I just wasted your time by hitting uh, whatever note that is, C, a lot, and uh, turning a knob while you listen to me. And I apologize for wasting your time, um, but I hope some other part of this was in any way educational and that you're having a wonderful time otherwise.